The Northeast Coast Exhibition of 1929 was a massive event, a once-in-a-lifetime experience that people remembered for years afterwards. It lasted from May to October and was held in Exhibition Park in Newcastle. This view by an unknown artist looks into the centre of the exhibition. The two towers mark the Palace of Engineering on the left and the Palace of Industries on the right, with the Festival Hall at the back of the square. In the distance there is a large green oval of the Athletic Stadium and further to the right is the Big Fair on Town Moor. The fountain was illuminated with coloured lights during the day. Festival Hall was the venue for concerts and meetings. Here we're looking along Queen Victoria Road to the entrance pillars of the exhibition on Claremont Road. The modern dual carriageway doesn't yet exist. These impressive columns were an Art Deco version of ancient Egyptian design. On the first day, 75,000 people flocked to the event. The architects were W and T R Milburn of Sunderland, who specialised in cinemas and theatres in Art Deco style. Nighttime drama was added with special lighting. A man is walking down the exhibition's main avenue towards the entrance. The tower in the distance is part of Armstrong College of Newcastle University. This is the view in 2020. Turning around, we're looking up Main Avenue, concluding with the Palace of Arts. This is the only surviving building. It displayed paintings lent by local collectors and pictures by Northeast artists of the day, including this painting by Robert Jobling, which was later given to the Laying Art Gallery and is currently on show. The Palace of Arts was approached by an Art Deco style bridge over the boating lake. The Evening Chronicle Tower, which played tunes on bells, can be seen in the background. We're now looking down Main Avenue from the boating lake, with the Empire Marketing Board Pavilion on the left. Unlike the other buildings, the pavilion was designed by a government architect who mixed exotic influences into the Art Deco styling. There was a lot of Art Deco detailing in the interior with elaborate columns and fretwork windows. In the pavilion, the produce of various empire countries was uh, featured at different times. The exhibition was opened by Edward, Prince of Wales, who explained in his speech that the aim was to revitalise industry in the North East. The Sultan of Zanzibar visited. He's shown with the Mayor of Newcastle, Arthur Lambert, who had chaired the committee set up to develop the exhibition. A Japanese delegation was invited, and King Alfonso of Spain was one of the VIP visitors. This view shows the Palace of Engineering with the Palace of Industries behind and the Statue of the Spirit of Industry on the right. The statue was created by Herbert Marion, Master of Sculpture at Armstrong College, Newcastle. The Palace of Engineering was devoted to heavy industry like shipbuilding, bridges and railways. The Palace of Industries displayed all kinds of other companies and trades. This is the North Electric Services stand for vacuum cleaners. There were stands devoted to Art Deco furnishings for the home. And this is a display of Art Deco glass by George Davidson's of Gateshead. Also fashion, featuring local department stores of the time, like Bainbridge. And this is a cookery demonstration by the Newcastle and Gateshead Gas Company. Going back outside the exhibition, this is the side entrance via the club building. The interior was elegantly fitted out with fashionable wicker furniture. The refreshment areas included a licensed restaurant, as well as snack and tea rooms. The big fun fair outside the main exhibition had a lot of attractions, like this very large slide. 
the patrons were winched up to the top and then whooshed down the slide. The banana glide was also one of the fair attractions. The motorcycle wall of death looks potentially lethal for spectators. The main riders were Pauline and Red Crawford, posing here with a visitor. The exhibition also included an African village with 100 Senegalese villagers featuring musicians, dancers and craftspeople, though of course nowadays it's abhorrent to think of exhibiting people in this way. The lion taming show at the exhibition is also something that wouldn't take place today. Nearly 4.4 million people visited the exhibition during the six months it was on show and it made a modest profit. Unfortunately, the Wall Street crash in America happened shortly after the exhibition closed, plunging the Western world into economic crisis and seriously damaging the exhibition's aim of economic revival. Nevertheless, the buildings, concerts, parades and industrial and art exhibits were tremendously appreciated by visitors and just under 120,000 people attended the closing event.